Gig Gab, the Working Musicians Podcast, episode 159 for Monday, April 2nd, 2018. Thanks, folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the podcast, that, as you know, that is by, for, and about working musicians. The goal is we all come together, we share our war stories, we share some tips, we learn some things, and uh, we're all better musicians for it in the end. Sponsors for this episode include Tune Licensing. We're at tunelicensing.com. The coupon code GIGGAB2018 saves you 15% off all their licensing fees. We'll talk more in detail about that later here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. That was a great introduction, Dave. Thanks. Here in Las Gatas, California, Paul Kent. Thanks, man. Well, it's been a, a technologically challenging day. So I, th- if you know what? If you folks are hearing this, everything went well. There you go. That's it. That's all I got. Yeah. If they press play and they have absolute silence, it's not going well. Right. But they, I guess they'll know that, but without us telling them because of the mm-hmm. silence, right? This is, well, this is almost, this is almost metaphysical. Very isn't it? meta at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know where we go from here, man. <laughs> um, we both played some gigs last week that, uh, that I think were, were, Based on our our quick pre show conversations, a little bit looser than we would have liked. Yeah, I, I had one Saturday night. When when was yours? When how fresh was your recent game? Oh, it, it's a fresh wound, man. It's uh, a fresh wound. It, it was <laughs> open it, wound. It's it's closing. It's fine. It'll I'll be okay. Um, it was a madhouse that we did on Wednesday night. So okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, House Rockers played Saturday, and I'll kick this off because mm. the topic is loose, and definitely loose was our was our Saturday night, and it's kind of interesting because things have been going really pretty pretty well. Sure, and I've been feeling very encouraged. Russ is really up to speed. Um, uh, our new drummer, um, we did have a sub. And so I'm going to, I'm going to take a little detour and I'll rant about subs in in a little while. Okay. Um, But for now, I'll just say that um, we started the gig. First song didn't have the impact that, that I had anticipated and that I'd slotted it for. Second song actually had a train wreck in it. And at the end of this, uh, without getting into the the sub rant, was the train wreck? Did it have anything to do with like the sub directly? Okay. All right. right, Oh, actually, you know what? No, this isn't the response. The the train wreck was not the responsibility of the sub. Got it. But there was one, there was one um, section of one song. This sub played with us before. Yep. And he froze on this one section. It's it's all him. And so when we knew we were going to have him play for us again, I made the request to the guy who booked the sub for himself. Yeah. It, will he be up to speed on this part? And I was assured that he was, and sure. he wasn't. Oh, all right. Well, so, um, you know, and I'm going to say broad, broad enough there, but yeah. um, the thing about loose is well, actually, you know, back to your question. Uh, no, the, the train wreck was not. Yeah. Okay. Was not the sub's fault. It was. I just wanted to get some a, clarity on uh, as we, as we dig in. That's all. Yeah. As far as I can tell, again, you know, well, one of my the, rules the, is the no different... fighting at the gig. Correct. Right? So, Correct. so yeah. I didn't dig into it too far at the gig. I asked a couple of questions, but not not with intent to solve it at the gig. Right. Yes. So while it was fresh in people's minds, I wanted to get some interpretations of what happened. Um, uh, and as near as I can tell, um, th- the person who caused the problem Um, was trying to affect change at a certain part of something. And the way that he, that he risked the effect of change confused people and nobody knew what to do. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Well, Yeah. It's interesting. And I realize we're already off on a tangent, but it's just great because like we all run into train wrecks, right? It it, it, invariably you play enough gigs, a train wreck's going to happen, you know? And I always kind of liked the way rush approached their train wrecks because they, you know, this is a band that plays really complex music. They're very well rehearsed and yet still, and I've, you know, I saw enough rush shows that I saw a few train wrecks or whatever. And 
like they get out of it and it's fine. And, you know, rarely would the crowd even know if it wasn't a crowd of Rush fans. But um, their rule is unless there's some specific reason to talk about it, we don't talk about it. Like we reversed. We know how the song's supposed to go. And and, you know, it didn't go that way. And it's and, and this for them. You know, and every band has a different dynamic, but for them, they realized when they they're obsessive guys. And so yeah. when they would dig in, it would actually make them more aware of making the same mistake the next time, as opposed to, you know what? Stuff happens, but we'll just do it again. We know it. Don't worry about it. OK, so so I want but, you to take that but, statement and I want you to stick it on the wall because I have a lot of very relative thoughts to what you okay. were just, finish your thought here. Yeah. But I want to circle back around to that as kind of my closing point on this. OK, yeah. Well, but it but. You know, you just identified like something, someone did something intentional for good or for, you know, presumably for the for the betterment of the of the scenario. But someone did something intentional that caused it. That is good to know about. Like, right. Like, oh, no, that was on me. I dropped a stick. So don't worry about, you know, like whatever, like that kind of a thing that I think is good to know, even if your your general rule is. We don't talk about it, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. OK. All right. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let me let me pause here and actually say that, you know, everything we're sharing here uh, about the gig, um, people who have seen this before came up and said, oh, great gig. Oh, you know, yeah. people stay, you know. So, again, you, you know, we have to keep in mind this, this is, is inward facing. Not that that's not important, but this is inward facing. So the gig went fine. The second set was actually pretty good. Sure. No, we nitpick. Um, it's, it, it, as musicians, nitpicking. it's what we do. Yes. Yeah, it's totally OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I'll jump ahead to um, I took the tact of, like I said, I just kind of asked some questions about the people involved with the train wreck, what they perceived happened, not pointing fingers at the moment sure. and trying to you know figure this out. And, uh, but then I, and I didn't send a note when I got home after the gig, which had been one thirty two in the morning, I waited until the next day. And I was like, Hey guys, uh, I haven't had to type this using Slack. Of course, I haven't had to type this for a while, but um, that was pretty loose. And we haven't had a loose one like that in a while. Um, my personal opinion is we don't just write this off and say, you know, loose gig, it'll be better next time. I really think it's up to every individual person to kind of look at their parts of the looseness and, and determine what's going on. Uh, and, you know, be, we'll talk about fix some of the things in practice or revisit some of the things in practice, but I'm not one to just kind of excuse looseness and just say, Hey, you know, it's okay. There was enough of it. I was just going to say it wasn't, wasn't an, an isolated accident. thing. Right. right. Yeah. And, and and this is the thing, you know, maybe a good place to start this discussion is I have a big band and I can almost feel um, a vibe creeping through the band. Right. So yeah. that vibe takes a few different ways. Like sometimes when we start, and even if the band's playing well, but nobody's on the dance floor, I can kind of feel the band getting a little tight, like, oh, it's going to be one of those nights we don't go over, you know, one of those types of things. You can kind of feel that kind of permeating the Amongst band. everyone. Yeah, everybody right. turns. I, the way I perceive that is everybody turns inward. There's they're, like the shoegazing starts happening. Yes. Right? Like, yeah. So I, that's actually that's this. That's my point about this. This looseness is like. I, after the second song, so first song was just not there. Second song was a train wreck. I yelled over on mic, everybody good? You know, kind of looked at people, let them know I'm very aware as as leader. Yeah. This is not going in the right direction. Essentially challenging them, pull your bootstraps up Step and let's up. fix this thing right yeah. here now. Yeah. Right. Uh, and that that tact goes over in different ways with different people. I, and, and let me just take a little side yeah, here and just kind of talk com- about horn sections. That's confrontation. Right. I mean, it's my, mild confrontation. But but yeah. to, to someone who is is confrontation averse, that might shut them down more. Right. Whereas yes. somebody somebody who's a, a little more comfortable with it or very comfortable with it might say, oh, yeah, let's go, buddy. We're going to make well, this thing happen. You know what I mean? So like, let's it, back up a moment here, because, you know, I would also say that it's a cal- it was a calculated move on my of, point. Of because course it was. Right. I certainly spend a lot of capital building people up. So my thought is, if I'm going to call out a, hey, you know, let's focus and let's get back on the page here. I believe that my style lends itself to people saying, Whoa, 
you know, he's serious. You know, we got, we got to get a hold of this. So it's, this, it's yeah. not like my criticisms are the only things that I offer people. That's not, that's not my style. And again, we talked about leadership styles and all those types of things. Some leaders are taskmasters and, you know, understand they can't be a friend. Some leaders need to be a friend, you know, first before they're a leader. Sometimes sure. there's no leader, right? There's, you know, there's a lot of different styles that play here, but I took a tact of on mic saying, everybody, all right, you know, to the band and yeah. kind of make an eye contact with guys. So, but that that moment where um, in a group, especially in a big group where, oh, I guess it's going to be one of those nights is an option to certain types of musical personalities. Right. Like, well, you know, we'll just it's do just what gonna, we can and we'll get through gonna it. It's just going to be that way. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Right. I'm determined not to let that happen. And I'm going to call that out because, you know, that that's a that's a bit of a cancer that can work its way through your through your group. So it, that, that's actually the point I'm trying to make about these things. Yeah, it depends on what kind of band you have, too. Like if if your band's sole focus, which for, with yours, it, I mean, it kind of is to to fill the dance floor and have people up and moving and all of that. Like you can't afford to go in a different direction. Right. You, you know, you. you yeah, you, I also am very much about all for one, one for all. So, you know, if even if that one guy, if that's his natural tendency, you know, that's if that's yeah. what he's feeling. I'm not going to allow that. You know, I'm, I'm actually going to call that out because that's yeah. that's non-productive because that's nine other guys trying to save the gig and one guy still holding it down still as an stand. anchor. Yeah. And I'm not cool with that. Right. Yeah. So and I'm you know, I'm not actually making this statement about any one particular guy in my band. I'm saying simply that people react to things going loose in different ways. Yeah. That is potentially one of them. I actually had a couple of phone calls, you know, it was important enough to me that I actually picked up the phone and called a couple of band guys the next day and said, you know, what did you think happened? How did you feel about the gig? <sighs> and, you know, they all agreed it was loose. Um, uh, they had different interpretation about what it was, but actually one of the guys who I talked to was like, you know, you don't really address just the horn section very often. So when you looked over and said, are you guys okay? I was like, hey, my responsibility as a performer is to, is to tighten up, refocus, not let any other elements kind of drag me down. And I could have kissed the guy because that's the right answer in my in my case. And then, you know, totally. at the risk of going down the tact of like, remember, you know, this is a real thing and real people are paying real money. As I said to the band, I had two friends there who had brought birthday parties mm. in to see us that night. They deserve the best that we can give them. This is the way my mind works. Right. Um uh, and that's kind of what I expect from my band. And that's a leadership thing. Again, in a, in a d democratic band, the vibe, the vibe might be all for one, one for all. You know, we're all in this. You know, there could be different interpretations of dealing with looseness. Yeah, although this is I, my, I, will I, say, this. I will say in a in a democratic band, it it cannot be democratic on stage. Mm. Like somebody needs to be driving the bus. Now, that bus driver can change throughout the gig if if your band like, you know, if you if you figure out how to make that work. But at any one point in time, there needs to be a bus driver like that's how, in my opinion. You can't just like fake it. No. So here's a question. Yeah. In in fling. Yeah. Have you had the tacit conversation on stage? I am the bus driver. Look to me. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not a de facto thing where you've asserted yourself and people just assume that. And so they know it. You actually had to, you know, had oh. the how to get out of train wrecks, how to, how, you know. Oh, you, so you mean explicit conversation on stage? Yeah. Like, have you said? Me. Oh, yeah. You yeah. said tacit. So I, I, I that, that, that's explicit. More explicit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't I, we've certainly had it in rehearsal about like, y you know, we need to. But but no, I, I don't think we've had that. Oh yeah, we have on stage. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, those they never go over well. I mean, it, it like I never like having to do it is what is the right way for me to reinterpret saying it never goes over well. It goes over fine. Everybody understands what needs to happen. I, you know, like it, it having to to me that's sort of breaking through the fourth wall, right? When Ooh. when you have to like expose that type of internal communication it's like yeah yep. positive internal communication great negative internal communication bad that's well remember the rest of the show has a lot of again so that's this is yeah. my style and yeah. i don't and i use that i use that hammer very selectively mm -hmm. i also like if a guy rips a solo i definitely point him out you know there, so of there's course, a lot of like of a mixed messaging going on that is you know i'm 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 leading and I have an expectation and it, we're two songs in. And so it's not practical for me to call a timeout and get us in a huddle. Right. But it, it, this is serious enough for me to say, 
we're not going to go down that pass. Yeah, you know, it's too, it's too early up. for a set break. You can't. <laughs> right? yeah. 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 So, yeah, but it's an interesting thing. And, and the point of all this is that looseness, having a loose night, um, I think how you react to it, how every individual reacts to it, you know, takes personal responsibility, recognizing that there are those types of musical personalities that, and I guess, you know, to be fair, it could be in anything in life yeah. who are like, well, you know, it's going to be one of those nights. It is what it is. And I, and I feel it's not, it is what it is. It is what you make it. And it's your responsibility you, you, to well, pull yourself up. To me, that's the beauty of, of live art, which is what we are doing here. Right. Is that you, it, it, you have the ability to control what happens next. You can't control what just happened. I mean, you could have then, but assuming we all agree that time is is going to move linearly, right? You 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 can control what happens next. So yeah, even though that what we just did sucked, like I can do better. I can focus better on the next song. I can do whatever. Or and maybe that's I can play it a little safer on the next song. And regain some, you know, both personal and group confidence and we can go from there. Right. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, but yeah. that, that's I mean, that to me, that's the beauty of of live art. And, it, well, you know, so there you go. Yeah. And I'll actually give you, you know, a really good example. So um, amidst this challenging gig of which we had a sub who was having a challenge that night. Uh, so every time we kind of got our our legs under us we might hit a spot. And again, here's the deal about the sub. He was a really remarkable soloist, but his section work yeah. was a little challenged. Yeah. And we would get to a point that to me, that's where, been typical with, with horn player subs and in, in a band right. where you've got a horn section. Cause that's, it's, that, you know, that section is a thing and it's hard to yeah, drop blending right in. And yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, but that was, that was one thing working against us is sure. that on an already kind of loose night, we might hit a spot where we needed a section passage to be particularly strong. And if it wasn't, then you, know, you could feel that the energy would come down, but there were many heroic moments over the night. So we debuted three new songs. Okay. One of them was Bruno Mars perm, which is oh, um, yeah. basically a James Brown blast. I put a little snippet of it on the house rockers, Facebook page. If anyone wants to check it out and, uh, and the band killed it. So a, there was excitement about playing a new song. My brother, Nick just, killed it and it was like a real high point where you re are reminded what good feels like on a, on a loose yeah. night so yeah. so i would call that a heroic moment we had a couple our, our trombonist had a really remarkable night his solos were fantastic and you know again heroic moment trying to raise the level yeah. of getting things going two other new songs that both went over real well we did um the four tops uh um Sugar pie, honey pie. Oh, you know, honey pie bunch. Bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Man. What a, you know, obviously, you know, it's a great tune. Everybody nods, at it, but it filled the dance floor and the vibe coming out of the song. So there's a, you know, Hassan wrote a great chart for it. It bounced. The rhythm section was grooving and people just smile on that song. And so that was really good. That's good, man. And, yeah. and then we closed the show with love train by the OJs, which also great was tune. exactly the vibe I had to brought everybody together. Just it. And it felt, and so we ended on a high. And like I said, Amongst the night where gravity was trying to pull us down, there were several heroic moments that were lifting us up and reminding us what good feels like. And that's that's kind of cool. And maybe that's the question in your band. Who's the hero? So you might have the leader. Yeah. And the leader may do something like it. But who's going to like say, follow me, guys. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to sing my right butt now. off. Yep. I got this. Yep. You know, get on my back. I'm going to take us through a tough gig. Every band needs those. One, at least one of those guys. Yeah, but not it's multiple it's better. Guys. Like you said, it's better when there's multiple people that can, can do right. that at times. And then you're like, oh, hey, cool. Like, it's it's not just me. It's or, hey, it's that guy. I, I should join that train. You know, I, I'll, I'll 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 I got you. You finish this one. I'll take the next one. You know, and exactly. Well, well, like I said, gravity can pull you down. Yeah, that's what gravity does. Yeah. It's, it's what do you want to do that wants to affect gravity and, and lift everything up? Well, that and you need a hero. That was how Madhouse was this week. Ah. It, was, it was our most ambitious Madhouse um, in terms of music. We had a six piece horn section. Only one of uh, maybe one, maybe two of the guys had played with us before. But a, as I've mentioned, Madhouse, I heard my wife describe it the other night. And it, it, it's a very efficient description. It is live music videos. 
That's really the best way to describe it. There's a band playing most of the time. Sometimes songs are tracked, but the other night nothing was. Um, it, it is a band playing, and then there's something happening that is, that that is in sync with the music, and and the singers are there. So it's these live music videos that we're putting on, and there's a loose story that sort of you know winds a thread through the whole thing and all of that. Um, and so every show is different, and and the music we've never repeated a song to my knowledge. Um, so. It's always, you know, you got to learn everything. And this was the, the the theme of this one was New York, New York. So they thought, oh, it would be great to have, you know, a big horn section and all that. And we have this guy who's been playing keyboards with us for about a year in Madhouse, this guy, Julius LaFemme. He is a high school senior. I don't even know if he's 18 yet. Genius, great keyboard player and can arrange all these horn parts and does a great job with it all. But he's also a high school senior. And, you know, it just so happened that his quarter, whatever it was, was ending uh, last Friday. We had this gig Wednesday. So he was totally, totally swamped and didn't get things as prepped as as he would have uh, preferred to, as we all would have preferred him to. But it, it really was there was too much on his shoulders. Like we shouldn't have had, you know, of the whatever, 35 songs we played, we shouldn't have had 22 of them need horn charts, you know, and of those 22, maybe 11 existed. And so he had to then chart out from scratch, you know, the rest of them. And, and so it, you know, rehearsal was rough because as, as we went to rehearse every song, it was, we needed 10 minutes of explanation happening and rehearsals happening. You know, we have a two hour window to rehearse the day of the show with the horn section. Cause we didn't have horns the day before. And, and so it was just this really stressful thing that continued to get more and more stressful. I think we finished rehearsing at 12 of eight and the show was supposed to start at eight. And so like they, they, they were like, look, we got to start letting people in. We're at fire code in the lobby. Like this, you know, this, the show sold out again, which is great, but you know, it's like, it's time to go. So we were not prepared and we go backstage and Julius and I are looking at each other like, dude, like this is bad. I, there, like we were just in the wrong state of mind. It was just, we were pissed and, uh, you know, and, and I'm like, I guess, oh, I got to go to my car and I got to get clothes because we decided to have the band wear suits. And uh, he's like, ah, you know, I almost don't even care. He's like, I might just like wear my T-shirt and jeans on stage. And, and at the time, that sounded like a really good idea. You know, it was like, yeah, right. I don't care either. And then I thought I went and got my clothes and I thought, no, you know what? Uh, dress professional become professional. Like I need something to change my mind here because it's in the wrong place. So I did, I put on my suit and Julius did too. And, uh, and we went out there and for whatever reason, we had spread the stage out in a weird way where, where Julius and I were as far apart as we ever could have been. And, and the two of us are the ones that, that run the show. We've, we've sort of worked out a thing where it, it, but we need to be able to communicate and we weren't having any trouble communicating during rehearsals, but we were just far apart. As soon as we get out into the room, of course, now there's crowd noise. There's, you know, whatever, 250 people in this room. It's like, oh, crap. Like, we're not going to be able to communicate at all. And we're not prepared. And it was like, oh, man. And, you know, the songs, like, there were way more good moments than bad. I know that. I'm still not ready to watch. There's a ton of videos. I'm sure if you go on Facebook, you can find them. I haven't watched them yet. You know, it's, it's way too soon for me. Um, it, it, you know, there were those, those, those loose, it was just loose all night long, um, mm. but probably tighter than a madhouse last year. Right. I mean, the bar has been raised. We've, we've really, you know, kind of changed things and, and made things a lot better, but it, it was not up to the st We can't expect perfection out of any of these. Cause it's a one night thing. Everybody yeah. knows there's going to be, you know, loose moments. But this one, everybody that saw it, even like my wife and daughter, who I texted before the show, I, I think as we got off stage for rehearsal, they're like, when are you guys going to let us in? And I text them I'm like, you can, you know, they'll let you in now. You'll see. And I'm like, this is a disaster. And that was it. I put my phone away. Oh, you know, wow. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just in the wrong. Then she said to me at the end of the night, she's like, it's so I could tell there were loose moments. She's like, of course. But she's like, that was great. It was fun. You know, so. People were entertained by the end of the night. We wound up creating it so that the last song turned into kind of a dance party and everybody that was up in the, in the seats and everything all came down to the stage. And, and, you know, the last song we did was dancing in the streets and 
And it was just, I mean, it was just a blast. That's cool. Which is great. Yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, Julius and I walked off stage and and he said, you know, if somebody could have told me it was going to go that well beforehand, I would have felt much better going on stage. I said, yeah, if if you knew that you, you wouldn't have been as concerned and it wouldn't have gone that well. I'm like, we, it had to go the way it went. And I said, but look, you know what? Look at all those people out there. They're still dancing. We've left, you know, but they're, look how happy they are. We, it, we're good. Like we wouldn't ever, like if we found ourselves in this position next year or whatever, we would know better than to only have, you know, this short rehearsal. We wouldn't overdo it with the charts or whatever. You know, there's a lot of lessons to be learned, but we succeeded. People came, they were entertained. They want to come back. Like, so it wasn't that bad. So there's an important point to make in the distinction between mental mistakes and physical mistakes in, in, in looseness yeah. and in train wrecks and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So, so the thing is um, I'm, I personally am more tolerant about physical mistakes. You mm-hmm. know, you rehearse, you rehearse, your brain gets in the way sometimes and you, you know, wrong chord, you know, you jump ahead to something, you know, whatever it might be, physical mistakes are different. Mental mistakes are things that I find a lot harder. You know, the, you, you, I think it's a fair thing to ask everybody's head to be in the game all the time. Right. Yes. Focused. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, for sure. Yeah. You can't check out. That's right. That's your you fault. You can't check out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and, and again, you know, mental mistakes are an interesting thing because um, I, I, I played with a guy who once things started going bad, I could almost hear the voices in his head telling him, you're no good. You're no good. And his, his performance would really go down. Yeah. Now that's, that, that's not his fault that he's hearing those voices. Right. You right. know, you know no, that's, no. that's part of who he is, who he grew up, how he grew up. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into the voices you hear in your head. Um, yeah. But you need to learn to talk to them. I, I mean, well, you really, do, you, you but know. that's a skill, right? That's yeah, a, totally. that's some people have more success. Some people pay millions of dollars in therapy to get to that point. <laughs> right. So, totally. yeah, so, but yeah, my yeah. point is, is that, is that mental, mistakes um are you, you do i as a leader do expect people to keep their head in the game focused and e- especially not when things go a little bit sideways like that's when it's really easy to say oh you know what Screw and that's what it. i'm saying it's yeah. going to be one of those nights you right oh, it's going to be a, it's just going to be a loose night no. and so that's kind of why i address this is that what i'd like is for my band to have a work habit and approach to things now this is my personality of how you handle crisis yep. uh, that I want to permeate the vibe of my band. I want it to be like, Nope, we're better than that. We go, we go, we come to play every night and you know, we, we will not be defeated. And like I said, you know, there's always something to learn. And, and I, I from this gig, I point to clearly we need a, uh, uh, a conflict resolution on stage conversation. Uh, there were three, heroic performances that, you know, at certain sure. points of the show yeah. lifted everybody up. That's, you know, a very good feeling that, that people in the band weren't, you know, at various times took the opportunity to lead again. Cause I, I don't sing every song. I can't do everything uh, besides just, you know, kind of create that vibe. So, you know, again, my friend, Steve French always likes to say, even when there's a train wreck, nobody died. And, and, you know, you keep it in perspective. Totally. However, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be going for the you very best care. you can be every Correct. one moment. Yep. You need to care. Well, and that, you know, the, the with, with Madhouse, um, we've all learned, but I mean, even, you know, personally, I've learned more of that lesson I was saying before, like, you know, it's live art. So the next thing is the only thing that matters right now. Um, yep. because that's what you've got. And the sort of the cool part with Madhouse is because these things are all one-offs, we know that when we've finished a song, doesn't matter if it, like if we played our asses off and it was the best thing we've ever done, or if it was a total train wreck and we actually had to stop in the middle and end it like ne- either one of those it's over. We are never playing that song again. Huh. Right. So throw away the chart What's next? That's all that matters now. You don't even have to think, oh, next time I do that, I got to make a mental note to, you know, do X or Y or whatever. doesn't matter. Move on to the next one. 
And that actually is a very freeing thing versus like a, a fling gig or something where, there, you know, when there's a problem, it's like, oh, yeah, we got to got to remember to circle back and fix that. It's like, nope, don't need to worry about it. Just keep moving. All good. We'll get to the end of the night. Then we can tear up all the charts and it doesn't matter, you know. And um, yeah. yeah, it's so which is good, which is good. It's um, that it's but it like I've I've learned to apply that in the moment to every gig I play now where it you know, the yes, I might need to circle back because, you know, if there was some problem in, in the previous song, we don't want it to repeat next gig. But in the moment, the only thing that matters is the next one. That's it. Yeah. All right. I want to talk about our, our sponsor, TuneLicensing.com here. Yeah. So uh, if you're a cover band out there, or even if you're an original band, like let's not forget so many great original bands broke into their respective scenes with cover songs, right? I mean, Van Halen, the Black, Black Crows, right? I mean, there's countless numbers. Uh, Rolling Stones. You invariably at some point are going to want to record a cover and you want to make sure when you do this and put it out that you are getting all the rights correct, because if you don't, you're going to be really in a bad situation when somebody figures out that, oh, you've released this song that you didn't have the rights for. You didn't get the rights exactly right. And now we can stop you from selling your CDs at your gigs or selling your music on iTunes or, you know, whatever. Like, you don't want that phone call. That's a bad, bad phone call. So, TuneLicensing.com is going to solve this problem. What they do is they understand. They know how all this stuff works. They understand, uh, you know, the different types of licensing in terms of, like, ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC and all that stuff. Master use, sync rights, mechanical rights. They understand how to get credit and royalties for the songwriter, um, and, and they can take care of all of that for you. And you, so you go to tunelicensing.com, you use their great search engine, you find the song that you want to cover, and then you tell them how you're going to do it, how it's going to work. And you pay the licensing fee, you get set up with them, and then you're good to go. Once they tell you you're good to go, because they need to go and they understand the way all the little world, you know, worlds work around them and all the laws work. And You need to have some things in place before your release date. Otherwise, you might not be covered. They'll tell you when you're clear to release. It's great, great stuff. And you can save 15%. Go to gig or go to go to tunelicensing.com and enter the coupon code GIGGAB2018. That's G-I-G-G-A-B 2018. That saves you 15% off at tunelicensing.com. A good deal. It's a good deal. Our thanks to Tune Licensing for sponsoring this episode. Definitely. Thank you, Tune Licensing. Yeah. Uh, you want to you want to rant about subs, my friend, or are we are we moving on to the song style selection? Um, I, I, this will be a very brief rant. Right. So you know the the concept of subs. So here's the deal. As a leader, just if you think about your band, sure. You kind of have to have the the practicality of the measure of the matter is you kind of have to have a sub friendly version of your show that you play. Right. Unless unless your band agrees to never play with a sub. Well, right. So so if you're going to have a sub. Yes. I think the smart thing from a leader's perspective is to have the the canonical version. Yeah. Yep. Now, this kills me because it might not be your best stuff. And, you know, might, you know, if if your band has put a lot of time into making some challenging stuff pop and that's part of who you are, that's part of what people come to see you for. um, That's unfortunate that you have to dumb down your show. And this is why, you know, and here's the rant. When you sub yourself, your band is less than what it should be, right? That's, that's the deal. If you take a night off, right. And bands have different policies about this type of thing, but net, net call spade a spade, a well-rehearsed unit is the sum of greater than the sum of its parts. Take out one of the parts and it's just a whole different thing. Right. So, yeah. So the one perspective is, is that the, the smart business perspective is a train wreck less show even if it's less than the grandeur of what you're, 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 you aspire to do when you go out. But, you know, for the, for the sub aspect of it, you know, you have to keep in mind. And I, and I would say my band has come a long, long way on this. I mean, I, we rarely have subs actually. And, um, 
but I've kind of lightened my, my own perspective on it. I used to be like, if you sub yourself X amount of times, you're not first call anymore. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. We are a band. We're like this. And you know, that, you know, that amount of kind of in your face perspective uh, didn't go over very well. So I'm kind of relaxed about it. But when you have a night like we had where, you know, like I said, we had, we had some people come out who were trusting us with their birthday party and they wanted to feel the house rocker experience. Mm -hmm. And, and it was, you know, we gave them the best that we had, but it wasn't as good as it could have been. That's a real thing that that transfer is a real thing. And, you know, I think you have to take that seriously. That is the, that is the commitment you have with your audience that you're going to bring the goods every night. Subs are a fact of life. People get sick, people get hurt. Family matters come up. You know, totally. this isn't people's sole income. So I'm not, I'm not downplaying the fact that, uh, that, you know, subs can happen at one point in my life, I was fairly assistant upon it. And, you know, the realities of doing this, uh, you know, with, with, with something that is, less than someone's full-time income, you know, were made apparent to me. So I've kind of relaxed my thing, uh, but it is, it is frustrating, right? Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it is frustrating to not be able to give people who trust you um, everything that, that you want to give them. That's, that's where flings no sub policy came from was, was that, that, you know, it's like, we want to give, we want to deliver fling. Yeah. And, and we know that the way we play, we can't like, we can't do that. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's my little rant on subs yeah. is that, you know, I, I think people take it seriously if they have to have a sub, you know, I hope that they do in my band, um, you know, again, family matters. Family first is always, you know, a, a motto for me and, and my band, but if you're going to take a night off for personal reasons, it has to be, you know, fairly well founded um other than than a bad thing a catastrophe sure. a sickness or something like that yeah. and you know i'm just reminded there are nights where we get through the gig and it's okay and in general i've i've kind of come around that subs are kind of part of with 10 guys the stuff is going to come up um i can't sub my rhythm section really i have you know i have yeah. one guy who sits in but it's not again it's not the same show and I guess maybe if we didn't have train wrecks the other night, I might not be in such a position of thinking about this, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, but you know, right now I'm just kind of sitting with, um, you know, man, you know, that, that woman brought a, 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 she's a friend of mine. She brought a whole group out and, um, and she couldn't tell. I know she couldn't tell. Uh, yeah. And, that's you know, the thing, but you they know. loved it. You know, but I know. And I felt like, you know, I felt like we cheated them a little bit. Yep. Um, well you did. And that's, I, I mean, in your, it, Based on what you would normally want to deliver to them, you did cheat them a little bit. In so the question of, is, how seriously their, their perspective, they weren't cheated at all. I, how seriously do you take the implied commitment you have with your audience? And this is whether you're a solo performer, a cover band, an original band, whatever it is. Well, that's a, no that's no a audience, no, you know, no trust, no, 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 you know, no investment. And you don't have a gig. Right. You know, if there's not something there that says, I, I you know, I'm here. We're going to create a night. We're going to create, you know, we're going to create a moment and create something beautiful. And, you know, we're going to play the music. You're going to enjoy the music. And that, you know, very healthy circle is going to happen. You know, how seriously do you take that implied responsibility? Yeah, well, that's and that's bigger. I mean, that that's sort of the theme to this whole episode so far. Right. It, that's bigger than just the sub thing. It, you can be you can have your normal band on stage. And if not everyone is on board with that implied commitment, then you're still delivering less, even though it's there's no subs, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. So we um, uh, I, I'm kind of going down your route with a madhouse. So so next Friday night, I'm doing my first PK and Friends classic rock night. So I've done PK and Friends, you know, the Tom Petty gig that I did. Yeah. Um, and I've, I think I've done a couple of PK and friends kind of acoustic sit and things, but the petty thing was rehearsed to some degree, a couple of rehearsals. Yeah. This is literally they're guys. I know guys are good players, big ears, big eyes. And I said, here's the list. And they, they've had it for two months, show up ready to play. And like we've talked about before, it's kind of the rock and roll fake book type stuff. Okay. Um, a couple yeah, yeah. a couple of things that, that, that required a little bit of time. Uh, I trust that these guys are good enough to do that. Right. So in the sure. same way that there's jazz fake books, you know, there's definitely pop music fakes, but rock and roll fake yeah. books. We're going to show up. We're going to do these types of things and we'll see. I mean, like I said, they've had two months. I've checked in with them often. I sent a framing note to them saying, all right, guys, here's the deal. I'm fully aware. There's no rehearsals involved with this. Wow. I chose you. I chose you because I know you can play. I chose you because I know, you know, and love this music. Um, here's the deal. No stink eyes on clams. 
have fun. There's going to be some loose moments, but there's nothing I can't get us out of. Follow the singer and kind of gave like a bunch of guidelines yeah. for yeah. how we're going to run this thing. And so my own little version kind of of a madhouse, um, but it's more like a fake book gig. Yeah, let's, it's, let's just, it's just a pickup gig. I mean, it, you know, in that in that sense, it's a rock and roll pickup gig. Yeah. 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 Well, that's cool, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. I um I went and saw on on Saturday night. Lisa and I actually drove down to Connecticut and back. So three hour ride each way uh, to see a band called those Melvins. Uh, they were, they were actually the reason Lisa, my wife and I met. And oh, we met. This is very special. Place yeah. It, yeah. Very special. Um, and they were uh, a, an original band, but, but more than just, you know, being the sort of the, the, the catalyst to Lisa and I meeting, they were also, they were a very, regionally successful original band back 30 years ago, 25 years ago. And, uh, and, and they were, you know, on the cusp of breaking through sort of uh, power pop tunes, really well-written songs, great band, a, probably a little too campy, which might've been the reason that they never really broke through. But I mean, there's a million reasons any band wouldn't make break through that have nothing to do with the band. Right. It's just like timing yeah. the industry and all that. So who knows? Yeah. Yep. Um, but, uh, but good band. And then, they, you know, they evolved, they kept things around. They, they actually changed names cause they didn't want to be competing with that, that, uh, sort of punk band, the Melvins. The Melvins. Yep, yeah. exactly. And, uh, so they changed the name to big train for a little while and, and the guitar player, uh, moved down to Australia. So they replaced him and then eventually they replaced the bass player who was basically the chief, one of the chief songwriters in the band. And, um, he and the guitar player were responsible for the lion's share of the like really tight harmonies and stuff. They had a, a dedicated lead singer who's still in the band. And so we went down there and, and it was, um, it was three of the original members. And then the, I mean, they're all, they're not original, but I mean, these, all these guys have played with the band, the, the bass player and guitar player that played the other night were the, the quote unquote new guys. So they've only been in the band, you know, 25 years or 24 years instead of 30, whatever. And, um, and, and it was good. I mean, it was relatively loose. The singer lives in California. Now they, you know, sort of got one rehearsal together and, and then it, but it was, it was, it was good enough that they, they were able to deliver their songs. Some of them were mild train wrecks and some of them were absolutely stellar. Um, and most everything else sort of fell, you know, closer to stellar than train wreck. And so it was, it was good. But what was really amazing was to see, and I think the last time this band played might've been five or six years ago. It seems like every, you know, somewhere between five and eight years, they sort of arranged, uh, you know, a reunion gig. Um, and this was in like the worst divey kind of place you, you could possibly imagine, but didn't matter. They filled this place with people that sang along with every word of all of these original tunes that these guys had written, you, you know, decades ago. And it brought everybody back and it was really just kind of magical to look around the room and think, wow, you know, like even though these guys, I mean, even at the time they kind of had their own jobs and lives and things like that. And certainly now, you know, they, they do and that music isn't like the sole focus of their lives. And certainly this band isn't, it only plays once every five to eight years, but <laughs> yeah, but still like, look at the impact that they were able to have. And, and, and so it, it just, it was just one of those things like, you know, take it seriously, right? There's your, your commitment to your audience and there's the payoff of your commitment to your audience. Like this band, every time they, they would hit the stage, they would deliver, they would deliver, they would deliver. And they were relentless about, they were great marketers. They were, mm. they were, you know, especially back then, but even still now their drummer sort of, sort of drives that bus and, and, um, and, you know, he's the one that pulled this gig together and, and made everything happen and all that stuff. And, and, and they were always good at marketing their merchandise and marketing their CDs and getting on radio shows and TV shows and, and just, you know, promoting and promoting and promoting themselves like crazy. And, and it obviously, you know, at some level it worked for them. Um, and it means a lot, you know, it meant a lot, but it still means a lot to all these people. And we weren't the ones that came from the furthest away. I think there was somebody there from Texas that came in solely because this gig was happening. And it was just, you know, it was one of those things that reminds you like, yeah, man, you know, keep doing what you're doing. This, this, this might mean more to the people that are watching you than you could ever possibly imagine. Uh, it really is a great reminder. Of what, one of the reasons you like, we, as a cover band, we know it feels good to play. Like, yeah. it, you know, feels good to get that reaction 
you know, that you've, you've made someone happy, you've moved somebody, you've, you know, helped two people find love, you know, whatever it might be, mm-hmm. it feels good to play. But I mean, you take that out to the next level. And again, as, as a not original musician, I find this a remarkable thing. When, and I don't know if you remember what, many, many, many episodes ago, we were talking about Barry Manilow yeah. and, and, you know, I said, listen, write one song that people take with them throughout their whole life and mean something to them, much less many songs. Yeah. Write one song, you know, that has that, that has that, you know, impact for people. And that's a career for a lot of people, right. You know, much oh, less many yeah. songs, but you, you are reminded, like if you, this, it's, it's like the magic of art. You create something that means something to somebody. You never know how it's going to affect them, how it's going to help them, how it's going to get them through a moment, how it's going to get them through a, a big decision in their life, whatever it is. It is really what art exists for is to stimulate people's emotions, their minds, you know, give them the possibilities of what can be good in life and help them, you know, to get to that place. You know, you fill a room with people who are singing your songs together. And is there anything more pure or perfect than, than something like that? Freaking amazing. Yeah. 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 They were, and it was it was really good to get down to see them. They were they were very inspirational to us when I was in uh, sort of both my high school band, Arite, and then my college band, Go Figure. Um, and we played some shows with them, but even just, you know, modeling a lot of our promotion and and, you know, just learning how to be a successful original band as opposed to just like, Oh, we wrote some songs and we'd love to play gigs. It's like, no, no, no. You make it happen for yourself or it doesn't happen, you know, and, and learning that from those guys too was, was great. And actually I got a, I, and this has happened before there, there's one tune their drummer sings. And so they invited me on stage to play with them. The other day. Oh yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. So he, you know, he, he saw me when I walked into the club, he's like, Oh, I'm glad you're here. He's like, you going to play with us tonight? And I said, uh, if you want me to, you know, it's your gig. It's not mine, but sure, I'm here. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, do you remember the song? I said, well, I knew it 25 years ago. What's changed? <laughs> he laughed. He's like, that's the right attitude. He's Same like, song. It'll, it'll be fine. Yep. yep. <laughs> so, and it did. It went really well. It was good. It was, you know, it's fun. So, yeah. Very, very cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. All right, so I'll hold I'll hold my uh, my song styles discussion for our for our next chat, Dave. But I do want to talk about it because I'm uh, I'll just tease it here a little bit. In that um, I have a, a singer in my band is just really excellent musician, great singer. His style of music makes he's so good at what he does, sure. and powerful at what he does. I have to figure out how what I do fits in. Uh. And sometimes in a band, you have that you have you have people who are so strong. You either want to play up their strength because it's good for your boy. Well, you do. You want to play up their strength. Yeah. because It's good for your band. But it may make you make other decisions. Well, you know, it, if you are every decision you make starts to define your band. Mm. And I and I think that's where this this conversation next week is good. Go. Good place to leave it. Yeah, right? absolutely. Right. I, I do have one thing before we before we leave you all. Um and and this actually, I, I I I mean I think about it all the time. But I was actually watching your your video the other night of you guys playing that that perm tune, and I wanted to share this tip. Um, iPads have become a thing on stage, right? It's almost accepted. I, I say almost because I'm not convinced that anybody should need them, but we all do it from time to time, or at least a lot of us do. Um, the worst part about having an iPad on stage is when your face is lit by the the cold blue light of the background of your screen right and and it's because for the most part you know we pull up charts that have that are black text on white background and it has you know like the lyrics and the chords and whatever else you might need well you can change that there's a thing on the ipad called smart invert and you can set it so that when you triple click the home button, it switches your screen from being black text on white to white text on black. And I'll tell you what, it's so much better on stage because you're not looking down like stages can be dark or whatever. You're not looking down at this thing. Like it's way easier for me anyway, on stage, way easier to read when I've got things inverted and it doesn't show up and highlight the, the, you know, everything there. So you can, you can set this in, um, in I'm trying to find it on my iPhone. Um, 
Uh, I love it when Dave the Nerd visits Gig Gab. Dave the Nerd has to sometimes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's called Smart Invert, and you, you can do what I'm doing in your settings. Yeah. Uh, you can just search for Smart Invert, but it's in general accessibility. Accessibility shortcut is where you want to go. And then you can set what you want that shortcut to be, that triple tap of the home button. And uh, and and that's that's what you can do. You can also go into accessibility and just turn on smart invert. But it's nice to be able to turn it on and off real quick. So it, cool. I, like every band that I'm in, I've taught people how to do this and and it's always well received. Um, so I should. Yeah, so there's a there's a show in there about our, our iPads and, and pads and tablets. Now an accepted way to do it. Nick yeah. just added one kind of a cool little um, bar that kind of comes off his keyboard stand. Mm -hmm. But it's a small it's a, a seven inch. Um, it's a seven inch pad form. It's fairly unobtrusive and he's yep. not staring at it all night. It no, looks noticed, terrible in pictures. I noticed right? on, on Mike stands. I noticed he wasn't looking at it much. I saw him glance down very quickly once to like get the first line of the next verse or whatever. But for yep. the most part, he was like engaged with the crowd and it was totally fine. I just he noticed was good with it. I just noticed because the video was sort of swirling around him. That it was like, oh, he's got the bright screen. I got to I got to uh, I got to share this with everybody, not just Nick, that's funny. But everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I, I would just to, to close that thought. I think um, they look terrible in pictures. Yeah, um, they do. You know, the, the it's it's a it's a challenge. And they make, and they make you look old for some reason. And I see kids use them, too. It's not just, uh, you know, us, us yeah. more seasoned musicians, I'll say. But uh, yeah, but it does. It makes you look old. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's hard train. to get a good concert picture with a with a you know a little bit of a technology sticking out from your mic stand. So totally. just uh, yep. you still the goal should be to know your material and spend all your time interacting with the audience. I'm, I would bet, like I said, we debuted three songs and uh, and the three of us who sang in those three songs. We felt pretty confident about him, but it was time to get him out of the rehearsal studio and get him on stage. And yeah. so, you know, I would bet that that's what that was about. Yep. Perm was definitely a new song. But um, yeah, I'm I'm against pads and tablets. My section reads and that's a whole other my horn section reads um, about half the charts for the show now. And, yes. and that's that's a discussion. But um, but for singers, I use I admittedly I use them in my acoustic gigs. Um, they seem because, more acceptable or accepted yeah. there now. It's just yeah. become a as, as do music thing. stands. Yeah. 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 And yeah. again, you know, you get you get requests and I would bet there's old time musicians out there who say like we didn't have it and we, you know, had no problem, you know, it out. Yeah. being accountable for having like if you want to be if you want to be a solo performer doing those types of gigs, your job is to know a thousand songs. Yes. Right. Yeah. Not not to know 20 songs and, you know, have the rest on the iPad. So, I mean, again, there's an old school. There's a you know, the, there's a technology angle to this. It's all kind of interesting. But the the biggest thing is they look terrible in pictures. They well, do. not the biggest thing. But no, it's not I, the biggest a very thing. serious thing. But I will say, you know, e even with the smart invert, if you don't need it for that next song, turn it off because yeah. we're so used to being distracted by that screen. That I've caught myself even in the middle of a tune, like I, I'll put the the mixing board, you know, up on the iPad or whatever, and I've caught myself in the middle of a song watching the mixer. It's like, what could po I don't need to be doing this? <laughs> like, it's not even like I need to, the lyrics or the chords or whatever. I'm literally standing here in front of people watching the mixer. No, turn it off. Like, forget well, about. Well, you it. saw that thing about how. Um that ex chief uh, science officer at Facebook had said that, you know, a large part of Facebook's development was a very conscious understanding that the like mechanism was a dopamine hit. Yeah. You know, there was a very, you know, kind of um, neural science type of aspect to what they do. And it's true. We as human beings are so you see a screen, you stare at a screen. I yeah. mean, it's just it's way we've become. It, well, and it's been that way. I mean, smartphones didn't start that. It was television. Right. I mean, I think it's like it's part of how we're wired. We see this shiny. Oh, you know, like, wow, wow. that's amazing. It's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right, right, we're off the rails, man. That's it. Folks, thank you so much for listening. Our thanks to Tune Licensing. Thank you, Tune Licensing. .com. I, I'm having technical problems, Paul. I don't even know what's going on here. The music's playing. It's Hang in there. I found it. I, I told you. I told you. One of those uh, days. Thanks to Tune Licensing. What's that, uh, what's that thing we like to say, Paul? I like to say, always be performing. Always be performing.